Ah, ah, ah. Aaron Torres. Ah. Has ah. One, of the, one of the worst takes I've seen in a very long time. I feel like, Car, we, we don't like to go too antagonistic on a personal level with anyone. Uh, with that said, I don't know Aaron Torres. And I'm okay with just calling this out for what it is today. It's a horrendous take. He's doing this to clickbait, I believe. If he actually believes this, uh, he's really stupid. That, that's what I'll say. But, uh, I again, don't know Aaron Torres. Would love to meet him. I'm sure he's a very nice guy. Maybe he would bring some light to this and make me understand where he's coming from. His whole slant here, he uh, he had a big rampage a couple days ago about how unfair it is that Zach Eady gets every foul call. And that Purdue, but we've heard we've heard this in Big Ten circles for years. Normally, yeah. it's coming from like Big Ten message board people that are just angry fans about their team losing to Purdue. Uh, it's bad when you know like a national media member has this take, and rival fans are defending Zach Eady and Purdue. Like that's how you know this is a horrible take. But he he basically made today's entire episode of his podcast. Um, I think it's a podcast, might be a live show. It was all centered around Zach Eady and their foul discrepancy. If you listen to it, he says that Purdue has shot 44 more free throws in their four biggest games of the year. They shot 18 more free throws against Tennessee, 14 more free throws against Alabama. That's not a coincidence. It's not strategy. Yes, Zach Eady is unfairly refereed, implying, again, Purdue is getting an unfair advantage. Do you agree with me that this is the most ridiculous thing you've heard this college basketball season? It it is easily up until this point early on, obviously, just getting the conference play, the worst take of the season. And it's so bad that it is clickbaity. And I feel like he's getting his way. Like there's everyone right now is talking about the stupid clip of Aaron Torres saying what he said. It just it makes absolutely no sense. Uh the wording of it makes it even worse because he starts it off like this isn't an opinion. This is a fact. Uh, my brother in Christ, not a fact. There's just so many things wrong about it between, uh, I don't know, maybe the fact that the teams that he was playing against that he listed don't shoot inside the two-point line as much as Purdue does, and they don't have a 7'4", 300-pound efficient monster in the middle as well. I'd like to steal uh, a little tidbit from our good friend Connor Hope. So people have been watching the – the recaps and previews. Connor's been on a couple of videos. He's with Heat Check. He says he had, he had to drop the our good friend. Yeah, I mean Connor actually is our good friend, but is Aaron Torres also our good friend? No, nah, Aaron Aaron Torres is. I don't I don't know what he is. Okay, he ain't, he ain't my he ain't my boy. He ain't my friend. He ain't my compadre. He needs to get his life together. But here it is, facts. Zach Eady gets fouled a lot because he's seven four, three hundred pounds, with good footwork and one of the most efficient shots in the paint of any player in the country. That is unequivocally a fact. Also fact, Purdue's opponents attempt just 29% of their shots at the rim, 19th lowest rate per hoop math, where Edie does most of his defensive work. So, of course, he isn't going to foul a ton, especially when he's one of the best vertical contest bigs in the country, which is fact. No one is better at not fouling on the defensive end than Zach Edie. Zach Eady doesn't get enough foul calls if we're keeping it an absolute buck, all right? Because, one, big men and stripes don't get along. Seven, four big men who are efficient and 300 pounds and are mobile and have good feet definitely aren't going to get along with stripes because they don't. he gets fouled every single time. He truly does. He's a hard player to referee, obviously, because of his size, but it has nothing to do with it being an unfair advantage to Purdue. That's just, a, it's, that's just wrong. It's not up for argument. It's unequivocally false. I, you said uh, big men and stripes don't get along. I, I heard the hurt in your voice when you say that. I feel like there's some history there. We, I mean, it's 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 sizeism. It's true sizeism. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I I criticized Matt Painter when he came out and had the quote last week of like, it's really stupid. You don't understand basketball if you say that, right? I thought he was being defensive. That was dumb. Now I get it. <laughs> this is what Matt Painter was talking about when he said it's really stupid. You don't understand. Like Aaron Torres is being really stupid. He doesn't understand how this works. He doesn't understand fouls. He doesn't understand how basketball works. The good players usually get fouled because they get to the line because they're driving the action, let alone someone of the physical stature 
of Zach Eady. He's a force the, the sport has never seen. There's nobody who can guard him without fouling him. Even if you send a double team, the only way to stop him is to foul him. Evan Miyakawa, I hope I'm not spoiling this, but he, he has numbers that he's going to share. I think he's launching it tomorrow that show Zach Eady's shot attempts are more valuable. They score more points every time Zach Eady takes a shot than any player we've seen in the sport in a decade. Like it's, it, it, you have to foul. That's the only way you can try to combat him. And teams do foul him. It, like, I don't, I'm not going to wade into the waters of like, does he deserve more calls or not? I know he gets fouled a ton and that's why he goes to the line. Torres picking out the Alabama game as his big gripe here is so nonsensical because Alabama shoots a bunch of threes. Like if you watch that game, Torres couldn't even go back and go through the film and give us examples of where guys should have gotten foul calls on Alabama. It doesn't exist. So like his entire argument is flawed. I think he knows it's flawed. I think he's clickbaiting. And I just think it's kind of low. I think it's extremely low. I think he shouldn't be doing this. And I think a lot of people correctly call them out for it. But I don't know. It it still doesn't feel like – like it kind of feels like Aaron Torres won here. And I don't like that. And also, like, I'm not uh, a clickbait master. I know you call me clickbait cart. But to me, being clickbaity is maybe taking the side of something that could go either way. This is just, like, wrong. It's not even clickbaity. It's just like wrong. But I guess that creates clicks. I don't know. It's really weird vibes. Well, him him trying to present it as a fact is the funny part. As if like there's just no context to it. Like next, Aaron Torres is going to discover that Purdue has outscored their opponents in eight of nine games. Also, like that's <laughs> oh, it's so there's not a negative correlation to that that has to do with cheating or an unfair advantage. It's happening because they're good. Zach Eadie's drawing fouls because he's good. That's how this works. Like, I can't believe we have to break this down to an elementary level for this guy. But I guess that's where we are. So. Can I spend on this before we move on? Yes. I kind of want to have a take that shakes up the world like this. I need somebody making a video about me. What would your Aaron Torres take be? This is a fun segment. <laughs> we, like what we, yeah should we should we wait 24 hours and come back with this as a segment tomorrow of what yeah what, what would your blow the world up aaron torres take? hashtag what would torres do <laughs> all right we're coming back that's tomorrow on the sleepers podcast we will do what would aaron torres do if you were aaron torres that'd be fun okay I can't wait all right let's move on uh to